Okay, now the other isolated tooth that we work with quite a bit is the uh, just the mandibular molars, and those can be kind of laundry sometimes because you don't have anything to elevate on. You know, mandibular teeth can be pretty tough, the bone's pretty tough in there, and uh, this is in a root canal, which makes it even more challenging, which means it's going to break off pretty easily there. So, uh, how do you get your elevator in there, and how do you get around it? Well, it's kind of hard to get an elevator in there, frankly. So. Uh, <coughs> Sometimes if you're lucky, they're periodontally involved. You can work an elevator around there, get a little space in there, get a little force on it, and get it to be loose. But uh, most of the time, you can't. So uh, you have to go with uh, right off the bat a lot of times with forceps. Now, I find with these uh, teeth like that, what I like to do, uh, I like the 23, which is what we traditionally call a cow horn, because it looks, at, it looks like a set of cow horns on there. And this will get down into the furca and uh, get a good hold on the tooth and you can rotate it right, left, up uh, and usually extract a tooth pretty easily with that if you get a good grip on it and that's a big if. A lot of times you can't get it down into the furca. So what I like to do is kind of uh, cheat a little bit there and make a little better access to the furca. What I do on these is a lot of times, uh, if you can see this, I'll just take the hand piece my little burr, and I'll just go down and almost like doing a crown prep, except I'll just do a small little access just on the buckle and also on the lingual axis in there. And what that does, it allows the uh, beaks of your cow horn to get down there a little deeper. And the key to extracting the tooth, either the forceps or uh, with your elevators, is to get down as close as you can to the root of the tooth or to the apex. If you just put force on the top of the tooth here, you're just going to break off the top of the crown. Uh, so with either elevators or forceps, one of the keys is getting your instrument down as far toward the apex as you can. Again, if you want to, on the elevators, I like to get down as far as I can on the mesial distal. So what I'm going to do is just take, instead of uh, uh, using the uh, forceps or the elevator right off the bat, I'll make a little access in here, get a little better grip on that, and get a little better uh, torque on that. Uh, so let's try that and show what I'll start out with. Now you really don't even have to lay a flap. Uh, do you lay a flap when you do a crown prep? Normally you don't. So as long as you're not going, uh, you know, 10 millimeters down there, you're just you're doing a couple extra millimeters on both sides to get a good grip on it. Now, I know you probably can't see that real well on the film, but I'll use a little elevator to extract it. Uh, you can get the, el the uh, Woodson elevator down in there, a lot deeper in there. And so that allows you to get a lot better leverage with your uh, 23 forceps. It'll just sink right down almost into the furca there, and you got a good grip. And I, I could probably take that tooth out of right now without too much trouble. So uh, once you get a grip on it, it's mine. I got a good grip on it. And what does happen, especially in endo brute uh, teeth, a lot of times when you do that, a lot of times you'll break it right in half, and that's not a bad thing either because then you can uh, elevate one half of the tooth against the other. In fact, a lot of times that's what I'll do. The other alternative is taking those teeth out if that doesn't work right off the bat. I show here, I'll just go ahead and section that tooth uh, with a burr right down almost to the furca. Now, what that allows you to do, since there's no tooth on either side, you can elevate against it. You can ele elevate the mesial part against the right, uh, the, the mesial part against the distal part there. So by making a slot in there, right, aim right for the furca there. You can, uh, then you will create a tooth, uh, one half the tooth that you can elevate against the other half. So. Hey, you want the? Uh, yeah, I may use the mask here. So. Okay, well, actually, when you blow the when you blow the dust, you can just turn this on. Oh, okay. Just blow it in. Okay. Oh, there's some suction going on here. Right here. Yeah. Yeah, that's the uh, laboratory hand piece here will take a little bit longer. I think see it's just a couple times this section and we need to only this little half that shoot.
again, uh, if you uh, want to do this with a uh, your typical uh, contrangle, that's good. You can do this with a contrangle. In fact, that's what I like to use is the impact here on these teeth. The surgical one, as you can see, as I'm holding it, it's, it's kind of awkward to get in there and get the right angle. Good oral surgery practice should have contra-angles, uh, I mean, uh, impact airs, contra-angles, a lot of the oral surgeons don't like them, but for a general dentist, you're trying to preserve bone and get some different tight areas like that, I, I really like them. They're not that good on third molars, but more than anything else, they you can use them in a lot of situations, so impact air is a good investment, even if you do have a surgical hand piece. Now, again, uh, uh, you may have heard from my previous lectures, I like to make the slots wedge-shaped because the uh, Cogswell A is wedge shaped, and so I slide in there and I can twist it in there and get it in there a lot deeper. If it, does, if it only goes into the top, well, when you twist it, all you're going to do is top, uh, chip off the top part of enamel. You want to get it all the way to the floor of the pulp chamber before it starts to bind. That's where you want the pressure to be. I'm going a little bit deeper than I normally would because these are desiccated dry teeth. Now again, this is my isolated teeth. I don't have anything I can elevate against either mesial distal side, so I've created two teeth I can elevate one half against the other. And this thing will seat down almost to the floor of the pulp chamber, we hope. Let me just do a little slower, make her a little snap here. There's a little bit of a snap there. And once you do that, you can kind of expand the alveolus a little bit, and then you can find them on both the mesial and distal surface. You can probably get the elevator back in there and wiggle a little bit. Again, bone expands slowly. Don't be in a hurry. It's just uh, it takes its time there. Okay. Now, the other instrument you can use, especially a root tip, uh, it's broken off down on these mandibulars, is the choir, or sometimes they call them the east-west. They come in a pair. And uh, these will slip down in there and elevate these. It may not work real well on this tube because of the crown in there, but we'll see over here. They're better for the root tips than the whole crown. Yeah. It's just whatever elevator you like to uh, take out these cells. It's really hard to get something exactly simulates a live human jaw, but uh, Dr. Marsh done a pretty good job of making it simulate the jaw. Well, I've had teeth break. And don't we treat the teeth? There we go. Alrighty. There we go. See that split down the middle there, so. That's what you want. Do you want it to come out in one half, go down through the middle there, almost to the fur guy, probably went a little further than normal, and uh, a little wider at the top so that this, uh, so that when you go in with your Cogswell A, you don't want the Cogswell A to bind up here, you want it to bind down here, so you're putting pressure down at the, at the, at the fur guy, not, not at the top of the crown there. Now I think this other crown may have broken off. We'll see here when I was working on it. So we may get to use our crier yet. Actually, I can just go ahead and demonstrate how we would use the crier. There are two curves, as I said, both right and left. Some people call them east-west. And you just go into the opposing empty socket, and you can actually go through some of the inner radicular bone sometimes. You engage that lower root tip. And it's coming out in pieces, but it's coming out. Okay. Uh, sometimes these roots don't read the textbook, so this would be it. Okay, so as you can see, it engaged on the mesial surface of that exposed root surface uh, to 
the opposing empty socket there, and that's what that's what these are really excellent for. So if you get out one root and the other one's still in there, uh, it's hard to beat these Crier East West uh, instruments. They're really great for uh, taking it out. So there's an example of two isolated teeth, both on the maxillary arch and the mandibular arch, which can sometimes be kind of challenging. So there's some uh, way you can attack them surgically and uh, make it a lot easier and quicker on it. So hopefully that'll be a beneficial tip to you. And the patient survived. <laughs> okay.